Hi everyone. Welcome to BS and Bench Racing, part of uh, the Real Builds channel. Uh, and this, most of you will probably recognize as, uh, if you've been following the series, the uh, weekend engine project that we did uh, on dolling up a, a used engine, turning it into something cool. It's a 305 or 5 liter Chevrolet V8. And uh, today we're going to take some time to talk about engine parts because I think a lot of people they get the dark greasy shape they don't know everything that goes into it and what parts of it make the horsepower so hang on for the ride with BS and Bench Racing we'll be right back here we are uh, we started this segment with uh, shot of the uh, V8 that we just finished painting up in our segment on detailing a good used engine. But uh, rather than use a multi hundred pound block that would take several people to throw around, we're going to use this little Suzuki Geo Metro engine to uh, demonstrate the different components. And the base of everything you build is the engine block. In this case, it's a three cylinder, uh, lightweight, I can chuck it around by myself. It's a whole thousand cc's. And what's interesting is, from the factory, this little monster is 60 horsepower. We can actually build this out to 100 horsepower. So 100 horsepower per liter is attainable with just about any size of engine. This one is a 1 liter or 1,000 cc's. The V8 that we uh, showed at the start of the segment is a 5 liter, which means, yes, in fact, you can have a 5 liter make 500 horsepower or more. So, this is the base. Everything you do is built off how well you build the bottom end or the engine block. Okay, this is our block. These are the cylinders. On the other side, we have where the crankshaft goes to live. These are your main bearing caps. And when we're installing the crankshaft, we lift out the main bearing caps. Put in our bearing shells, which go top and bottom. And they're what the crankshaft rides in. The oil that's circulated through is the cushion between the bearings and the crankshaft. Now, dark greasy shapes. Let's talk crankshafts for a second. This is the base. The crankshaft is part of that base. So, what are the parts of a crankshaft? We have the main bearings, and we have the connecting rod bearings counterweights, we have the front of the crankshaft where the pulleys go, we have the bank crankshaft where the flywheel goes. This whole assembly, once you put the bearings in place, drops into the crankshaft, into the block, like that. Done right and built well, the crankshaft can spin many thousands of RPM. An engine like this one in racing is regularly used up to 10 or 12,000 RPM. Street use, 7,000 is about the limit for a well-built engine because the three cylinders set up a pretty nasty harmonic. Now, next part, we got the crankshaft in, now we got to connect everything up. How do we do that? Well, we start by looking at what goes in the hole. This is the basics of a piston. It's the top, the skirts, the ring lands. This is the piston pin, which goes in to connect the piston to the connecting rod. Once you have the piston, the pin, and the connecting rod together, you have a piston and rod assembly. Again, top, skirts, pins right in here, 
and this is your connecting rod. And it's just what it sounds like. It connects the crankshaft to the piston, and this assembly goes in here, bolting up to the crankshaft. As it goes up and down, the connecting rod spins the crankshaft to produce your power. In this case, it's a three cylinder. What else are we putting on the block? Well, we're going to have to put on a water pump, of course. And key to making things survive is an oil pump. Now, this particular one runs off the crankshaft. It bolts on here. Other engines have it in different places. This one would slide over the crankshaft, bolt up here, and it's spun by the crankshaft. It picks up its oil from the oil pickup which is installed here. And then the oil pan goes on to cover the bottom end and make it tight. Some engines have it mounted externally. Some have it mounted in the pan, depending on the kind of engine. But you're going to have one because the oil pump is like the cardiovascular system. The oil it pumps through runs through all of the bearings, makes its way up on the cylinder walls from spray from the crankshaft, circulates up to the cylinder head that we're going to look at in a moment, and provides the lifeblood for the engine. Without oil and without the correct amount circulating through the engine at the right pressure, your engine will only last seconds. But built properly with a good pump well-assembled bottom end, you can have an engine that will turn many thousands of RPM, producing 100 liters per horsepower or more. So that's the bottom end of our engine. Let's talk about the top end. And again, we're using the little Suzuki because it's nice and light and I can chuck it around. Don't try that with a small block cast iron head. This is our cylinder head. This particular one is an overhead cam, which means the camshaft is installed in the head and it's spun by a belt operating off the crankshaft. Great for high RPM use, a lot of small engines use it, but you can also find crankshaft in block which means it literally mounts in the cylinder block like a Chevy V8 or a typical Ford V8 that's older. And through lifters and push rods, it operates the valves. So, the cylinder head. This side is the exhaust side. So, when the exhaust valve opens, which is typically the little one on most engines, this excess burnt gas from the cylinder comes up through here and out the exhaust ports. On the other side, we have the intake. Intake, typically the bigger valve on most engines. When it opens, it draws in mixture through the ports to the combustion chamber so it can be compressed and burned by the engine. Now, let's take a look at a couple of those pieces, starting with the intake. This side's the intake side. And here's our intake manifold. This is where the throttle body mounts on this particular engine. This is where it bolts to the head. So it'll sit on there. Basically, like that, allowing the throttle body or carburetor, depending on the vehicle, to be mounted and provide the fuel and air mixture to the intake manifold going through the intake valve into the combustion chamber for it to be compressed. Now, why is all this stuff important? Because this is where all the horsepower gets made, is in the top side of the engine. The 
bottom side is what allows the engine to survive and provide the displacement. But the cylinder head, doesn't matter whether it's a 4, a 3, a 6, 12, is where the power gets made by flow. We'll talk about that a little more. The opposite side, you have the exhaust manifold. And if you want a good example of a bad exhaust manifold, this one would be it. But when the exhaust comes out of the exhaust ports, it goes through the exhaust manifold and exits into the exhaust. Now let's talk for a second why this is such a big part of where your horsepower comes from. First of all, the design of the cylinder head makes a huge difference. The shape of the combustion chamber, the exhaust ports, and the intake ports, and how much they flow determines the volume of air that the short block or the bottom end of the engine is going to get to work with. The better the head design, the more air it'll flow, the more power it'll make on any given engine. So, what controls those pieces? Well, number one, as we said, the ports. And what we do very often, and this one's already been set up, is use porting, so matching these ports and smoothing them out with the intake manifold ports and smoothing them out to increase that airflow. On the exhaust side, it's much the same thing. The exhaust ports determine how easy it is for the air to get out, how much air can be pushed out. So the burnt, spent exhaust gases come out of here into here. And we also port these, smooth them, and do the same here. Now this one isn't getting done. Uh, this ranks amongst the world's worst exhaust manifolds. We'll be building a header for this engine, which is a tubular exhaust manifold designed to maximize flow and scavenging. On the intake side, we're going to be starting off with this intake manifold, but we're rapidly going to convert to an individual runner system, most likely with either a multi-port injection or a uh, uh, individual carburetor setup so that we're flowing more air. Now, key to making the engine do what you want is the camshaft. If there's a piece of the mechanical side of the engine you could call the brains, it'd be the camshaft. The lift of the camshaft lobes, when they start to open, when they start to close, determines what the engine's going to do. If you want power at a low end and a nice smooth idle, <coughs> or if you want to move up into a higher RPM engine, build lots of power, you're going to end up with a rougher idle generally, and much higher lift, and the valves will be open much longer. So key to making a high performance engine is selecting the right camshaft. And every engine's going to want a different camshaft, and every use is going to want a different camshaft. So what works well in a drag race engine won't necessarily work well in a road race engine and may not even be livable in a street engine. So camshaft selection is tremendously important. When you put the whole system together, when you put in the camshaft, you put in the exhaust, you attach the intake manifold, the flow through this whole system is going to govern the kind of power you're going to make. There are different intake systems for different applications. There's a different exhaust manifolds or headers for different applications. And we'll get into those kinds of details as we start to build high performance engines. But this is where your horsepower gets made. The more air you can flow, for a given displacement engine, be it 1 liter, 5 liter, 7 liter, the more power you're going to make. So this will be a large part of developing a high performance engine. As I said, in the case of this particular engine for an upcoming project, we'll start here with a well-ported manifold matched 
to the intake ports, which are also port matched to the manifold, and then cleaned up on the inside. We're not going crazy on this one, but we're going to clean it up. The other piece of the puzzle is, is valve size. For high RPM power, the bigger the valve, the more power you're going to make within a given engine. Now, we have to be careful with this because if we use too small a combustion chamber or too big a piston dome, it can actually shroud the valves or block the valves from letting airflow come in. So these are all considerations we make as we go towards building a high performance engine. Other components that come into play for us on this, ignition system. This is the distributor off the three cylinder. It happens to mount on this end of the engine. It's turned by the camshaft. And ignition systems, again, are a big part of what we're dealing with. A lot of cars are computer controlled now. You don't even have one. It's all done by the computer. But most engines still kicking around that we're hot rodding have a distributor. And the curve and the time and the development of the spark is key to keeping that power up. This gives you the ability to make power. This tells helps it do that job. Once you've got all this together, all the pieces in place, you've determined the compression ratio, the camshaft, the intake, the exhaust, all the other pieces, you're going to find the more power you produce, the more heat you produce. If you're producing more heat, you have to deal with it. And a key component in overall on this is how you're going to cool it. For this particular engine, I've had a custom built radiator made. Now typically, a radiator in a small car like this is about that wide and about that tall. Because we're going to be producing around 100 horsepower when it's all done, which is almost double, we needed a bigger radiator. The other piece was, I want to be able to close off as much of the nose as possible, so this radiator is actually designed to mount very low in the car, so it's wider, thicker, and shorter to fit in the available space. But we have to have enough cooling capacity in order to keep the engine at the right temperature so that things work properly. Overheat it too much, she'll blow up. So, in short, that's a quick tour of a typical engine. Cylinder head, block, crankshaft, piston and connecting rod assembly, piston, intake, exhaust, and ignition. So I hope this helps you as we go forward talking about engines and you'll get to see how these develop. But right here is where on almost every engine the bulk of your power is built. There's never any replacement for displacement, but if you can't make the air flow, it doesn't matter how much displacement you have, and this is where the air flows from. So that's a short shot from Real Builds for today. A little bit of education, a little bit of hands dirty, we like that stuff. And I hope it helps you understand how the air flows through the engine, how the short block or the bottom end of the engine goes together, the block, the connecting rods, the pistons, the importance of good oiling system and good cooling system. So when you build your own engine from scratch, you can develop a package that's going to do what you want.